Aloha, welcome to, welcome back to the uh, show, Talanoa Talk Story, Share to Inspire, where we hope that the story my guest shares, it is hope that it will inspire you to just get on up and go for it. Don't sit down, get on up and do some burpees at home or get outside and climb the stairs up the hill and just go for it, okay? So, I'm going to stop talking as I often talk too much with my introduction. Folks, families, friends, wherever you may be, I would like to introduce to you, uh, firstly, my co-host, uh, that is Jacko Ahoy, and this guy here has a story or two to share, and also, the man of the hour, Orini Ai. Hey guys, hello, how's it going? Hello, Hello, Mr. Hello, <laughs> guys. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me here today. Before I go on, I want to quickly uh, share a little brief story with uh, my about my co-host when I first met him and when I first met Orene. So my co-host, Jacko, I met him in uh, Honolulu and here's a little thing that, um, here's a little story that Jacko, you may remember when um, we play a little bit of touch to introduce the game touch to folks here in Hawaii and the TV station came along and they filmed it and you brother did a sidestep that only <laughs> people in the Pacific do. And that sidestep was actually a leapfrog <laughs> over the other TV host guy. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> and we all had to stop it. Oh, wow, what was that sidestep? <laughs> and so Taco has a mean sidestep, <laughs> but a beautiful player as well. And let me introduce to you Orini Ai. Now, um, I did not meet you in person only, but I was introduced to you via my brother. And speaking of sidestep, my brother actually told me about you and said, hey, miss, you gotta go and watch this guy already. And actually, I was just talking to my brother recently and he said, you are a hot stepper. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm waiting for you, for you to answer that question. So folks, families, welcome to Talano Talk Show, Share to Inspire. And welcome to my co-host, Jack Ahoy, and our guest, Orini Ai. Aloha, brothers. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Missy, for uh, having us here. And uh, as you mentioned, like Hawaii, you know, like I, I think that time I just came from Samoa, you know, and during that time, too, we were playing a lot of touch. Mm. And... You know, everybody wants to step anybody over there. So when I got to Hawaii, you know, it was it was kind of like one of the things that like it just came natural. Like I'm sure all of the Islanders, that's one thing that they always try to do is try to step. You know, and we watch a lot of uh, famous players. You know that you know that we tend to try and uh, yeah. do their side step, jump up and down and stuff. And sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it works. And if it works. I guess that day, it obviously worked when the TV was there. So, anyways, but playing in Hawaii, you know, with, with you and a lot of uh, brothers there, it, it was it was some good times, you know? Like, there's a lot of talent there, like, a lot of Pacific Islands, you know, they oh, yeah. run hard, they run hard, and, you know, just the, uh, the physical aspect of the game, it's, it's, it's always there in Hawaii, yeah. you know? and, um, you know, Mm -hmm. Anything that I kind of noticed, it, it's, and I'm sure like Orene and you, you, you two, Misa, know about it. It's a, it's a discipline part, you know. Like a lot of our Pacific Island, you know, they, you know, we play hard, but you know, sometimes we tend not to come to practice, you know, and, and then show up at the game, play a good solid ten minutes, and then when the you know the tank ran out, then that's when you know start to. Throw some high, some low, you know. But I, you know, I believe in like a lot of the Islanders. If we put a mine in, mm -hmm. and then we train harder, I think mm -hmm. we can get somewhere. And you know, like Pope or Rene, you know, he's been around the world, and he's one of the men that I, you know, that I know and always fun watching him. Yep. But, you know, and then now I'm floating to the, you know, in the mainland now. She called like, you know. <laughs> Like back in the <clears throat> over here, it's called the mainland. So yeah. this is still in Hawaii. Just playing around, you know, playing in a lot of clubs over here. It's a different, uh, it's always a different vibe, but you know, 
Mm-hmm. Rugby, it's for everybody. It's a fun sport. And uh, you get to meet all the brothers too, you know, all of the Pacific Islands. Yeah. Everywhere. So. Definitely, definitely. And the brothers are all over the world playing rugby, and that's a wonderful thing to see. Cool. Thank you, Jacko. More stories definitely will be coming from you. Um, so, Orene, the big, big, big question uh, that I always start off with is um, can you please just give us a little brief uh, synopsis or introduction about who you are and where are you from? I, I know where you're from, but for the rest of the world, please share that with us. Hello, uh, hello. Firstly, thank you, Misa, uh, for having me on the Talanoa show. Uh, obviously, you know, it's good to see my brother Jacko as well. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about uh, the show and, uh, and to share some of my experiences and some things that have uh, at least propelled me to where mm. I went with my rugby mm-hmm. um, and continue to go now with my coaching. Uh, my name is Orene Ai, uh, born in Apia Samoa. I have three sisters. Mom and dad live in Australia, Brisbane, Australia. With my two younger sisters, my older sister and her husband live in Dubai. They've been up there for about 16 years and they're pastors up there running a Life Global Church in Dubai. Uh, myself, I have four beautiful ch- uh, kids. Erica is 19, Ooh. my son Jayvan is 17, Jasmine's 11 and uh, we got a little one. Uh, Bayana, who turned four last week. So uh, the three older ones are uh, from a uh, uh, previous marriage. Um, my wife and I now have uh, our beautiful four-year-old, uh, and they're back in New Zealand now, spending time with family and staying away from all this COVID stuff here in California. <laughs> but uh, played uh, professional rugby for Auckland, a uh, bit of Crusaders, uh, Hurricanes, and then obviously uh, on the seventh circuit with... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, New Zealand, uh, and I also like to mention I first started playing on the circuit in 1998 for Manusa So, you know, I was I was one of those lucky ones that had the opportunity to play for my birth country and my adopted country. I guess uh, uh, if you'd like to say, um, but yeah, you know, a little bit about me. I'm living here now in LA, and uh, been in America. Or Jacko says uh, in the mainland for about <laughs> six years now. About six years. Um, so yeah, um, I'm enjoying the, the new opportunities that that come with uh, living in America, um, and excited for the future as well. So again, thank you for having me on the show. Ah, uh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm always happy to hear about people's story and their success story, I should say, and what has inspired you to keep on going. Um, yeah, so I guess it all starts back to when mum and dad made the decision to, to leave Samoa and, and, and travel to New Zealand. As Polynesian parents, uh, they're always looking for their, their next opportunity and, 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 and their better life. Um, so we moved to New Zealand in 1987 um, and you know, dad to work, we had no car. Mom used to, you know, catch about three buses, sometimes four, to, to, to get to school. Uh, she was a teacher. So I guess just being around that, um, seeing my uh, mom and dad um, make ends meet and, and, and not having us, uh, my sisters and I, uh, I guess, see the struggle. Um, so for me, um, you know, I used to say this a lot when I – when I used to speak at schools, um, is that the only thing I passed at school was the rugby ball, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I was one of those. I wasn't like my sisters who were very good at, um, you know, at school. Um, and to be honest, you know, rugby has taken me to to, to many places, and has given me the life that I've I was able to, you know, to live and and, and enjoy. Um, but you know, my motivation came from seeing my parents get up early in the morning, go to work, come back, and make it look like that they weren't struggling, um, which was a big thing for me. And I guess it's, it's a big thing for a lot of uh, Polynesian parents as well who make that decision to to 
you know, take the family and, and, and mm. look at it, you know, those better opportunities. Um, yeah. As a youngster, um, I used to, from when I was about 11, I, I, one of my motivations, uh, I guess my idols that I idolised um, was my cousin, Toto Bainga. He played for Mount Samoa. He was one of the men. And he, I agree with you on that, Jacko. Um, Cause you know, bro, growing up in NZ, um, geez, when you see a player that has like the full package, sure, sure. he was he was to me that guy, and um, oh, and, and then of course I saw you already after, <laughs> but you are so right, that guy to me had the full package. Um, did you get to play with him, or were you guys at a different time with? No, I, I, that was one of the, the, the biggest achievements of my, my rugby career was having watched him in Samoa play for Motaa, play for the Manu Samoa, um, and then moving to New Zealand. <clears throat> Obviously, he came across as well, played for Auckland. Yeah. And just as a youngster, walking through Eden Park and looking at the photos, you know, I, I, I saw him, you know, next to Sean Fitzpatrick, Michael Jones, um, Big Ronan Clark, you know, all the legends, and then at that at tender age of about eleven, mm -hmm. I thought that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be on that wall and and, and to be a rugby player. Um, and it for me, I had to do whatever it took to to achieve that. And like I said, mum and dad, we didn't have a car, and I we lived in Otara at the time, mm -hmm. and our training was was based in Mangrove East. Aye, aye. But so, as, 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 uh, as you mentioned, uh, Rene, like that uh, you've been around the world, you know, uh, playing rugby. Uh, what's one of your favorite uh, place, like in the world, like country that you played in? Favorite places to uh, travel? I, I love going to Hong Kong. Hong Kong was, uh, you know, as they say, the, the, the mecca of, uh, of sevens. Um, and then, you know, Dubai is always a good time in Dubai. Um, you know, from the, the photos that we saw when we first went over in '98, you yeah. know, it was just a snippet, bit, and then now it's you know what it is now. Um, but I guess the, the the place that sticks to my mind was uh, actually going to um, Jerusalem, Israel. Wow. Yeah, that was the really seventh tournament in uh, in Israel. Um, and we had done it. It was a pretty long tour that time. I think we went to Japan, France, England, back to France, and then we finally went to to Jerusalem. And we were the first team there, you know. So we mm. get there, we try and go through customs, and they didn't even know where Samoa was on the map. So <laughs> we got stuck. So we got stuck. <laughs> so we got stuck in the airport for like uh, I'd say it, it felt like ten hours. So we were playing races on the on the you know with the with the, the carts. And then it wasn't until a young lady she just started working. One of the boys I was pushing the trolley and one of the boys said hello to her and she said hello back. So we were like, it's English. <laughs> so we went over. So we went over and asked her, you know, if she could speak to her boss. And and funnily enough, you know, I guess it was a blessing for us because she was from she was from New Zealand. Wow. We talked to her and, you know, asked her to talk to her boss because he had ripped up the map by then because we were trying to, we had the map on the table and then we were pointing on the, on the table to, to show where Samoa was. <laughs> we laughed, like, uh, we laughed uh, I think our coach was Nico Palamo at the time, our manager was um, Romeo Archong and captain was Simo Stiti. So we were laughing wow. and the guy ripped up the map up and walked away and we were stuck there for you know about 10 hours man I... it, wasn't, it wasn't until she 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 talked them until we got our passport stamped and we we're able to go i hope I, I hope those guys were able to learn a bit of geography with you guys over there man oh wow what a story that is where's our more uh that way <laughs> oh come on <laughs> here in the mainland they always say same one and one, you know, and then you have to like mention like Hawaii, New Zealand, Pacific Island, yeah. and, and that's when they kind of you know know where Samoa is. And then they always, uh, I'm sure probably a Rene goes through this too when they look at us, 
they were like Samoan, like it's, they're so used to uh, seeing all the football players mm, mm. so big. And every time you say that you're from Samoa, they look at you and they're like, "Oh, you're you're not that big," you know. And then you know, and then on, on the other hand, they always speak Spanish. I don't know if you get it. I, they always speak Spanish to me. So every time. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. ¿Qué pasó, amigo? <laughs> well, you know, so so now you, you've been in the state for like six years. So I mean, what's what's the big difference in the style of rugby? Mm -hmm. I know you played like in, I think you played in France too. So what's the the big difference of uh, rugby here in the states and like New Zealand and compared to the to Europe too, where you were at? Mm -hmm. I guess you know the the the, the big plus is, is in growing up in New Zealand and, and Samoa is that rugby is our number one sport, you know. So we we were kind of born into it, you know. We we so mm. that rugby IQ kind of mm -hmm. we 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 kind of just pick it up, and that's not from us sitting in a classroom looking at videos. It's just us. Sure. Playing yeah. a game of touch rugby like you guys were doing in Hawaii, and just improvising and 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 learning how to you know manipulate the other team so that we can score. Um, the biggest difference is, I guess, obviously here in, in America, it's it's probably the number fiftieth or sixtieth sport, you know. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> but, but you know, I've noticed, yeah, it, it, like um, this but, right here is speaking up pretty good. Yeah, but it's it's growing. Like you know, yeah, after that tour to Jerusalem, I we actually came to to, to Northern California with the, that Manusa Moore team, and there were so many teams like that played rugby. Um, I guess the, the the difference is the quality of coaching, mm -hmm. um, and that that players here I have access to, um, you know. Like I, I came and, and, and went to Sacramento and we had guys that were just learning rugby, going back to coach rugby, these kids. Sure. So you know, there was yeah. no real, I guess, development from the coaching side of it um, from when I first got here. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you had guys that didn't really understand the game, coaching kids that had no idea about the game. So sure. I guess... That's the biggest difference there is having rugby people that know the game, understand it, giving back and, and I guess developing the local coaches so that they have more understanding and, and, and more of a, a rugby IQ. That's so, that's true. I mean that's that's what I've kind of noticed too. Like is when I moved from Hawaii up in the mainland. So I you know, I played some rugby in Connecticut, Utah, you know, around uh, Maryland and now in the North Carolina but that's that is so true because it's like a lot of the rugby here are like coach and like if A is to go this way you're gonna go there B is go there you know there's you know sometimes like I always say to them like it's the the instinct you know so we play with a lot of flair and like instinct mm -hmm. and then you know if A if this is where we're gonna go to A and if B opens up you know, you you got the green light to do it, but it's yeah. it's very you know it's like you mentioned, it's such a big difference than like growing up in Samoa and now living in the, in the states over there. Like you just you always have to express yourself. You know, yeah. do it if it doesn't work, and you can do it again it, if it works. Keep on doing it. if it doesn't. Don't do it. You know. What I mean? so. How how much do you guys think that um growing up in the Pacific Island? How much do you think that helped you guys with your with your game but i don't think it's just one sport all right yeah i know there are a bunch of other sports that you guys are naturally uh can adapt or become good at like tell me about your thoughts about how much was it how much did that influence you guys having grown up in samoa and then of course moving away yeah well growing up in samoa i mean we i mean like already mentioned it like the rugby it was the number one sport but I was fortunate to play some basketball because the high school that I went to was like a basketball school, like, you know, the church college. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I mean, it, it, that helped me develop my my skills, you know. So when I went from playing basketball and playing in our, and I think Marina remember too, like the Mary 7th in Samoa is the biggest one. Mm. So if you're playing like in your, uh, in your village team, you, you want to make that team. So me coming in, uh, playing a lot of basketball and playing that, uh, you know, club with a lot of uh, basketball skills, it definitely helped me because I came on the first uh, time and then I make the team and my brother, who was my biggest, you know, I always look up to him, didn't make it. So for me, that was big and, you know, and it's, and then playing a little bit of soccer too. You know, there's so many sports like growing up, but if you're not playing rugby, then you know how it is with all the jokes that comes in, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Playing out of sport always helps, you know. Yeah. This for me, you know, I always uh, give my, you know, I always say I, I had really, you know, good hands and good catching skills from my time in, in, in primary school in Samoa, playing rugby, you know, at lunchtime because you didn't have a rugby ball, so break a stick. <laughs> yes. some good times right there yeah you know and so on Mr. you would have you seen that yep um, sure. but if you catch the stick you, you got it in your eye so you know that's where I guess that's where you know the hands came in but you know so most of my sporting stuff happened in New Zealand you know we moved when I was seven mm. going on eight um, but you know because I saw it First hand in, in, in Samoa, I wanted to try everything, you know, whether it was softball, I remember softball, soccer. Um, mm -hmm. Netball was big too. Netball. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Netball, yeah. You play a lot of netball too. Say, you know, having three sisters, I used to play in the indoor netball team. And, and, oh, you know, indoor that helped netball. A lot too with, uh, yeah. yeah. I tried that once and I went, <gasps> I can't <even> breathe. <laughs> it was a tough game. Oh, hey, did you? That was good. That was yeah. a good time. Did you guys play with a bunch of folks in one sport and did you all transition together to another sport? For example, from rugby to cricket or basketball to cricket? Because I there was a bunch of guys that, 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 that played rugby and then they all went over to play cricket. Did your friends did you all follow your friends? Yeah. No that that like just to add on that one, like so Growing up in Samoa, like it, we don't have like we had we don't have a lot of players to play different sports. So after rugby rugby sevens, then you go to rugby league, then you go to rugby touch, you go netball. Like it's it's just all year round. So and that like helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, get to like learn a lot of skills from different sports. So it True. definitely helped. Yeah. So, already, what are your thoughts? Just going off of what Jacko said there. What are your thoughts in terms of coaching? Do you look for a player that has the skill sets or more the awareness of the game? Because you can develop the skill sets, right? But if somebody comes in with all those sets of skills, that has to be an advantage to you as a coach. Definitely, you know, if you've got a player that's like naturally, you know, gifted in terms of vision, his passing, uh, spatial awareness, decision making, and obviously, you know, you, you, it's a plus for, for you as a coach to have that person on your team. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always that person might be all of those things, mm. but the attitude and the drive and commitment to training doesn't go hand in hand. So right. I'd rather take the kid that I can develop and that wants to learn and wants to be there committed and enhance their skill set over the kid that has that, that natural talent, you know, so, um, and, and it's a fine line, you know, um, and being a player and being on the coaching side now, those are the kind of things that you really need to kind of pay attention to is you've got to actually take your player's hat off from when you used to do things and when you used to, you know, now you've got to, I guess, be neutral more, um, more so than 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 anything is to kind of identify those key key elements to, to what the players are and and you kind of pick it up fairly quickly um, to see who the players who are naturally talented and want it 
they'll turn up to training every day. They'll make a way to, you know, they'll find a way to get to training. Um, and then the ones that have all the, you know, talent in the world, mm. but the attitude that just doesn't match the talent. That, that's very important. And, like, and, that's very uh, important. The attitude. That, that's one of the biggest things. Like, you know, growing up, it, it was, and then you think about it right now, it's, it's so much different in coaching. Like, you know, like, like you said, you got to be able to talk to the players and analyze, you know, their strength and their weakness. But, and, and that always, you know, that works pretty good right now, and especially in the generation that we are on right now. <laughs> but I know like you and me, uh, growing up, it was just like this, this, and this. And then if you don't do it, then it's like, uh, you know, yeah, but, um, I agree. I, I guess, check out. Sorry, um, you guys will know this when the coach tells you to run around the field, mm -hmm. you run around the field, right? And you don't cut corners, dude. <laughs> I was so nervous that the coach will not let me play. So, when I got to the corner of one of the field, I could see the, the you know, the corners of the playing field. I looked at it. At the back of my mind, the, I could hear the coach's voice saying, no cutting corners. They were on the other side of the field. They're not going to see me go around. So what did I do? I went around the court. I did not want to let the coach down. All right. That was how much um, the aroha you had for your coach and the, and the attitude that you, you guys talk yeah. about. And, 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 and when you say that, sorry, Misa, and that's not a reflection of how... You, you, you feel about what the coach is going to do, it makes you feel better personally because then now you're accountable for what you, you're doing, you know. So and I guess a lot of, you know, a lot of the kids nowadays, they, they forget that. They kind of forget that is that, um, you know, I'm sure you guys have all heard that, the, you know, there's no I in team. A lot of coaches say there's no I in team. You know, sure. personally, I think there is because I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for what I'm bringing to the team. I'm responsible for my actions and what I do to, 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 to contribute to the team. So if I'm not pulling my weight, then I'm leading you two down or the rest of my teammates down. So, you know, I kind of think that there is an I because without all those eyes, there's no team kind of thing. You know? yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. Yes. We all got we all got to pull our weight because if we don't pulling my weight has got a different context and meaning for me these days now <laughs> it's a certain age and then you're like oh, come on man the mind is still there but the body is not funny so <laughs> yeah so, so, little, yeah, yeah. yeah. alright I was talking to Jacko the other day about <laughs> so chime in when yeah, the mind, the, but the body is there. This is still wants, this goes 100 miles an hour, but the body is, hmm. Yeah. So where's your body then, Oreni? Come on, you're the hot stepper. Talk about being a hot stepper. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, the, the older you get, the, the, the slower the body gets, and, uh, you know, the reactions are not as, as quick. But the body's not too bad. Um, you know, I, I try and keep myself uh, fairly fit. I train every now and then. My wife, she's a crazy fitness freak. So, you know, if I'm not doing it, then she gets on my case. But, I mean, being around a lot of the kids and a lot of kids that that, that I coach and a lot of the players that I coach, you know, I'm one of those coaches that I'm not going to tell you to do something if yeah. I can't do it myself. Yeah. You know, yeah. in terms of fitness and, and stuff like that. So, um, and, I, and I feel like that players respect you more because they know that, you're doing it and then you're not just you know this yeah that's you know that that's true because it as we all know that you know famous uh phrases like action speaks louder than words so yeah i'm sure, I'm sure when they see you you know i'm i'm, I'm a really fan of uh big fan of Rene, you know because when i think when i moved to the states in 98 i remember when i came to new zealand with the uh, with the Samoan uh, squad that we went and play uh, against the, a lot of the boys, the Samoan boys from Auckland. Uh -huh. And, and uh, I think we, we ended up selecting one, uh, one guy from, uh, from the whole Samoan. I, I think you were probably there too, Ren, but you were still young. Uh, 
we had taken up uh we took Apelu. Apelu with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Easy. yeah. So I, I remember those, you know, that, that was some good times over there, but uh, it, it's it's such a different uh nowadays. Big different. The mind's still sharp though. The body's a bit <laughs> still, but the mind's still sharp. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That is so true. You know, I mean, like the mind is sharp, but then sometimes you think that the body's there too. But then, you know, then you then you play, and then like after, you know, wake up on Sunday, can't move. Monday, still can't move, and then that that that's when you're like, okay, maybe maybe it's I need to do a little bit more than a little bit more fitness and stuff. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Hey, a um, couple of things that just came out of this little conversation here. Uh, Alena, you mentioned family. Um, and I know we all have family now. So I see uh, I see Jacko goes out with his kids and gets them out there and do stuff. And Alena, you just mentioned your wife backing you and supporting you to keep going. Could you guys talk a little bit about, it seems like motivation is not from somewhere else now. But in your early days of playing, but now motivation is within your household. How important is it to have that support from your, uh, from your family, from your ainga? I think it's it's, it's very important. Uh, being you know Polynesian, being Tongan, Samoan, you know, the the, the root of our being is, is family. You know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> You know, so I, I guess it's, it's it's very important. Um, you know, having uh, a wife um, or a partner that that supports you and, and and you know gives you the drive to 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 keep doing what you're doing. Um, it's important, you know. And obviously, mum and dad and the girls, you know, they're probably my biggest um, supporters. And my sisters, um, and my mum and dad, my mum. Crazy, you know, but you know, it's 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 like you said, you know, you don't have to look too far for that that motivation or that inspiration now because now we've all got kids. You know, they're not going to look outside of uh, of the family circle to for for that inspiration or that that motivation. They're just going to look at what we what we do as parents. So you know, so uh, it's it, it's a big key. Yeah, it's, it's a big key. Our culture is very big on families. You know, like the Pacific Islands, and it's. And, you know, once you made it there, you know, like once you become a, a, a big player, you know that you have to support the whole family too, you know, like yeah. the uncle, the cousin. And, you know, sometimes it puts a toll on us. But at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's how who we are. You know what I mean? Like if, if you do good, you're always going to help. We always have that heart that we always, you know, we might complain, but at the end of the day, we always end up doing it. Because the love that we have and in our ingas and it, it, it's so it's so strong, you know, and that's one of the biggest thing that I always, you know, I'm proud of, like the Polynesian culture and like Samoan, you know, as well. Like, yeah. we always love each other, and it's and it motivates me too, like you know, to take my kids and try to you know play with them, and uh, you know, it's just a. Uh, it's a blessing to I. I feel I'm a proud, you know, someone. And uh, growing up in the island too was was probably the best time of my life. You know what I mean? Like we were like so poor, but we were so happy. You know, mm -hmm. and and living in the states, you know, you might get a lot of things, but you have to you have to work for it. You know, yeah. in the islands, you, you don't have food. You walk to your cousin's, your auntie's house. You know, you, you time it well, you know, like six, oh, they're going to serve food there, boom, they'll call you. <laughs> it's like, got right there, you know, just the, the love that's right there. And, the, you know, it's, 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 it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Especially when uh, you move away from your home base, um, like where do you look for that motivation, right, to keep going? And Arena, you've played, uh, Jacob mentioned France and other places, Japan and Europe. Where did you look for motivation or any when you were so far away from your base? Um, well, you know, faith, you know, and that you're never gonna you're never gonna get anything if, if if you don't put your faith in God. God gave us the talent to, to, to do what we do. Um, so you know, you got gotta always give um, give thanks and 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 that's you know 
every weekend or every other weekend, that was my mum, you know, she'd be on the phone mm. just reminding me, you know, to to say, don't forget to pray, don't forget to thank, you know, God for 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 the blessings that we have. Um, you know, so faith is a big part of it. Um, and then obviously, you know, we we were quite lucky. Being in Japan, we had a good good group of uh, players. Um, you know, we had a great uh, Philo Tia Tia who was there, Troy Flavel. Um, so we were in one team. So we weren't too far far away from family. We, we you know, we had family, you know, home away from home kind of thing because we knew people there. The same thing with, in, in France. You know, we had the late uh, Jerry Collins that was there with us at Toulon, Sonny Bill, um, and Tana was the head coach, you know. So there were a lot of players there that, that kind of kept us and, and, and made things feel homely. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've just got to look back in your own little circle and, 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 and your family. And then, obviously, you know, they say, you know, nothing's possible without God, man, you know, so true. that's a big... Yeah, that is, that is so true. You, um, you just reminded me of uh, something that Apollo, uh, your mate Apollo <laughs> Berlini, uh, he also said, because he went to the other side of the world as well, the UK, and faith was a big thing for him. And at the same time, Inga Tukamala was over there. Mm -hmm. So faith, you know, helped him as one way of keeping, um, staying afloat, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. Players from the South Pacific, they've gone all over the world and they've done some wonderful things. Um, I want to just jump back to Dubai. Um, that place has changed somewhat. And when I spoke with Apollo, he said that, yeah, it's changed since, since way back then. What are your what were your thoughts about going to Dubai and playing footy over there? Um, was that just like a razzmatazz flash kind of thing, or how important was it to go there as a professional rugby player? Obviously, it was a you know it was a it was it was a blessing to to be selected and, and to have the opportunity to actually go to Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, the first time was back in '98 with, with Manu Samo, yeah. um, and. My roommate at the time was uh, the, the legend himself, Muliana Tilly, uh, Brian Lima. You know, so <laughs> um, I was scared and, 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 and excited at the same time because he was my roommate. Um, but being in Dubai, like, like um, Apollo was saying, you know, it's changed so much. Like we, when we first went in 98, there was one grass pitch and then everything else was sand. You know, now you go back, and there's like 50 grass pitches, you know, um, which is, you know, just a testament to the growth and, and development of, of, of that country. Um, but, you know, the, the standard of rugby um, is improving. Um, Apollo's doing some great stuff there with his uh, academy. Um, so, but yeah, you know, it's, it's good to see that the game's growing in all different parts of the world. And, and obviously Dubai is one of my, my best uh, best places to visit. You know, if it wasn't for COVID, um, we would have been over there in December for the Dubai Sevens. Um, we play in the, Vets, uh, in the Vets tournament now. All the old guys get together and try and show that we still got the goods. <laughs> Speaking of like, you know, like you mentioned that you were, if it wasn't for COVID, you'd be in... Uh, Japan. So I think by the time July comes next year, I think uh, everything will be all right at that time. So just be ready to come uh, visit me. We're going to put a team in the Cape Fear 7. So, oh, yeah, sure. Start ask, asking for uh, like a visa now to talk to the, yeah. the wife, you know. <laughs> I'm stamped. It's already stamped. <laughs> You're in. You're in, brother. You're in. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now that yeah. is something. Now that is something I like to see the uh, hot stepper or in the ear within the side stepping killer with uh, <laughs> Jacko there. We'd love it's, to see that. <laughs> speaking of that, like I, I mean, I I'm gonna try and get the the master like Sereri too. I, I spoke to him uh, before too about that tournament. So he said that he's gonna come down. And I'm sure if oh. he knows that you're gonna come down too, we're gonna have some fun there. We're gonna play oh, the, the you know the over <clears throat> over forty. So, but. I like to I'd like to pass the ball to Sarubi. 
<laughs> I like to run and go wait to like five more five meters before the try line. It's yeah, we're going to pass it to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, and speaking of that, like so we we you know like we have like a a tournament, you know, and and I always like uh, kind of hosted with one of my good uh, Palangi friend here. And like that sevens, like I always bring a lot of Polynesians. So, you know, the good thing is that we get to hang out and just, mm -hmm. you know, just be yourself, yeah. you know, because I know like, you know, a lot of us that live in the States right now, you know, we, we're like so far apart from each other. So I try to organize, like, especially that tournament to get like a lot of the Poly, you know, like Fijians, Song and Samoans, you know, we'll mix it with some Palangi, and yeah. some Millies, you know, but the fit guys in there. <laughs> What's that? We need the fit guys in there. <laughs> yeah, we got. We get, yeah, we, like, we like, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we get some, some, you know, some fit Palangis and some fast Millies in there, and then it, it's it's just a good time. Like just like having just hang out with the Polys. We get to you know pick on yeah. each other. You know, our sense of humor sometimes it's a little bit yeah. you know too much. But like I said. Uh, the, the love for, uh, the more we, uh, if we love you a lot, we're going to throw you under the bus. You know, <laughs> that's, that's how our Pacific Island joke is. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the beauty about rugby. The bus. You know? That's the beauty about sport is, and, and I guess rugby, it, it has that, that, that way of bringing everybody together, no matter how far you live, no matter how, if you've just met somebody for the first time, second time, you know, through rugby, you're always going to get along and you're going to have a friend for life, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Friendships, they last forever, eh? Mm -hmm. um, Randy, what was it like for you to um, uh, play international rugby? Uh, dual international, Samoa and New Zealand. Um, when you're talking about legends, <laughs> you mentioned Sarevi, uh, but you yourself, you yeah. scaled the heights and you kept going. Um, could you share with us your thoughts on what it was like to don on, to put on the uh, the blue for Samoa and the black for NZ? Um, and then you became the player of the year in um, 2000 something, sorry, I forget. Five. Six, five. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, IRP that's, player. IRP player. That's, that's, that's IRP, great. yes. Yes. Yeah, IRP awesome. Sevens player of the year. So. Yeah. Could you share with us your thoughts, please, Darren, on playing for those two countries and being the player of the year? Yeah, I was, you know, young, young, young man back then. But like the tournament that uh, that Jacko mentioned was the Mara Sevens. Mm -hmm. um, and I went over there. We took a team from from Auckland. It was called the Auckland Barbarians there. Um, and our coach at the time was John Akoi. So we went over, um, myself, uh, Milo Tippi played for, for Manu Samoa as well, and then and Mills, Mills Muliaina, he was playing. So we we managed to get to the final of that tournament, and I think we played our final against Maris because we beat Maris, and they had Simo Sititi and Afatu Soalo. Um, we beat them in the semi finals and then went to the final and played Mota and got absolutely smashed. But from off the back of that. I got. I was selected for 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 the for the Samoa Sevens team, and um, you know, like I said, being young and, and watching Toto Vaenga, mm -hmm. and and obviously my mom's brother um, Antile Aolupo, um, who both oh, played man. for Samoa. <clears throat> um, you know, to, for for me to have that opportunity to put on that that that, that blue jersey was um, meant the world to me. You know, and I. I was, I was so proud. My mom and dad were proud, you know, and, and I just felt, you know, although I had made it, like for me, I always thought, yes, you know, making it was the easy part. Staying there and being a, a, a consistent member of the team, that was going to prove my worth in terms of, you know, being a, a very good player. You know, anybody can make a team once. Anybody can do something once, but it's about doing it over and over again and, and, and performing at the highest level. That's what kind of drove me. I, I always wanted to improve myself and improve myself against the best who, you know, were New Zealand and Fiji back then. Um, what what kept then, you going then? What kept you going? Just, I guess... When you get into those environments, you talk to the older players, 
you know, you talk to a guy like Brian Lima, who's, who, you know, had played three World Cups, you know, prior to that. Um, you get their experiences, what they did to, to, to get to where they were. And, and then you learn, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a learning thing. So you, you had your own motivations within yourself, but then you wanted to emulate what those guys yes. were doing, you know, um, to, to, to be at the top of their game. So, and, and, and that's all you got to do. Like I shared uh, my story about, you know, Tovaenga from 11 till about 15 years old, summer, summer, summer holidays for us in, in New Zealand. I was either training with Tool, you know, mm-hmm. through the, throughout the summer holidays, or I was picking onions with my family, you know, in Fukukoi. Um, and, and that was it, you know, that was, that's, that's all I remember from my summer holidays was either sweating in the sun for, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours, picking onions, or I was, I was, I was training. With, and a lot of that, you know, to actually kind of taught me what hard work and dedication was. That kind of gave me the the drive, mm. the extra drive to 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 be better than what I was. You know, the year before, you know, because he always said, you know, that the best players are always training. If if you're not training, somebody else is training, and that person is going to take your, your your spot. So. Um, and and I put that down to, to to his his push and his his guidance as well. So um, and then obviously with New Zealand, you know you get to rub shoulders with Eric Rush, you know, Dallas Seymour, the late great Jonah Long, um, and and like you said, you know you just pick their brains and just want to emulate what they're doing to be at the top of their game. Um, you know, so had the had the the opportunity to, to to play alongside, you know, Michael Jones mm-hmm. and Ironi Clark, those guys, you know. So you're always learning from 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 those older players, and then what you do there is they're passing that knowledge down to you and that that kind of drive, and then you want to do the same too with the players that are coming through. So, um, and I guess that's what you know for for me that's what kept me going. It was I was more the I was more afraid of not being consistently in the team, you know, that's what drove me to, 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 to stay, to train hard, to, to keep training when, when no one else was, um, you know, because I wanted to be consistent. Um, yeah. at my so, train. Uh, just, just by listening to, you know, a lot of, like you mentioned a lot of players, and I don't want to put you uh, on the spot, but obviously like Toe was one of your biggest heroes. So I, and I, Assume that that is your favorite player too. So, who is your second favorite player? <laughs> My second favorite player, um, my my second favorite player as as a player, as a leader, and as a mentor, I'd say would be Eric Rush. Um, you know, just, just living in Otara, you know, not too far from each other. Um, you know, just his guidance and his knowledge um, that he imparted on on me, um, similar to to what's all did for me. Um, but you know, you, you never saw a guy complain about doing fitness. You know, and and as a youngster, you know, you you have those moments. But when you look at a guy like him, who was the oldest at the, you know in the team at at the time, um, you know, beating all of us young guys in the, in, in the fitness, um, yes. you know, that motivates you and, and, and that kind of puts a, you know, plants a seed in your head to, to say, hey, man, I, I need to be better. But, that, you know, those two were probably the biggest influences in, the, in, in my rugby career, for sure. Speaking of people and people that you look up to, uh, or any, I did a little bit of uh, research as in, Type your name into the uh, uh, internet world. Um, and you went to Otahu College? Yes. Yep. Uh, there were some famous Kiwi uh, folks there um, in various sports. And I came across uh, uh, Olsen Filipina, uh, Filipina um, 
and David Tua was there as well, and some others that uh, went to their school. I, I forget their names. And you, you guys mentioned uh, surround yourself with people who are at the top. I know there's an obvious question in this. There'll be many ways to answer it, but could you guys share your thoughts on how important is it to be surrounded by people, by good people, not just people who are uh, who have gone scale the heights, but people with good character and good quality that can help you. And you guys have mentioned a couple of those names, and even Jacko, you mentioned your brother. All right, family. And Fraser, how important is it to surround yourself with good people that are going to serve you, but not just, you know, ah, I think this guy will help me. But, you know, that thing about uh, being respectful, you know, the follow all thing in our culture is so important. So how important is it to surround yourself with good people? I'll let Jacko start answer that. Oh, it, well, like uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned, you know, like my brother was it's a big motivation for me. But like right now, like with us having families, you know, start having our kids get to a certain age. And that's one of the things that I always uh, remind my son right now because he's 13 now. So kind of mention it to him like uh, when you get to a certain age now, like you need to start surrounding yourself with good friends, you know? Because especially living in the a, in a, in a States, you get, you know, you get a lot of friends from different background and different, you know, and which is, which is great, like, which is, which is awesome. But I have to remind him that, you know, if you sit to a certain age, you start noticing that friends that really care for you, you know, and you need to surround, you need to keep those. The other friends that, you know, that tend to get in trouble, you kind of, you know, push them a little bit like out of the circle, but just having like a good uh, core group of friends that support you. You know, when your real friends is like when you're down, they pick you up. You know, when you ask for advice, they give you good advice. So those are the kind of friends that like you need to uh, surround yourself with because, uh, you know, we joked around, but like there's a saying like, so it's like you know when it comes that when it comes to your like when you're in trouble that's when you know who your true friends and your two brothers are so yeah no it's good that you know the question like you said you know there's there's two ways to look at it you know surrounding yourself with people that i guess have started and 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 have been up there in terms of uh credibility um, through sport or whatnot, you know, and then have surrounding yourself with people with good character. Um, you know, I think the second second um, option or, you know, or second part of that is, is, is really important, you know, having people that see you for you and that are genuine, mm -hmm. um, sure. you know, not just there because you've been you know this person and and you know your your status has been this um and jacko says you know you you yes you know you a, a, as as youngsters you kind of you're naive to that mm -hmm. at, at, at first you know you kind of just want to you know be friends with everybody and and, and you accept it right? and, and that's that's a polynesian thing you know we all we're very friendly people but then sometimes that friendliness gets taken advantage of and yeah. And we get that, you know, at the end of the day. So, you know, it's a, it's important that the people that you surround yourself with it may not even be from rugby. It may not even be somebody that is up there and they they chosen. You know, it's just somebody that can genuinely see you for you mm -hmm. and and tell you how it is. You know, and, and and be straight with you because at the end of the day, if if you know, I'd rather hear the truth than than than, than somebody sugarcoating something and then. <laughs> you know, say turn around and stab you in the back but you know if you tell me straight i'm good with that you know so uh it's it's really important you know and, and i'm thankful that I've, I've had a lot of those people and i've got a lot of those people in my life um and, and as as we all do um, but you know it's it's important that i guess as things get get crazy you know you kind of 
tighten your circle a little bit and then you kind of weed out the, the ones that you think aren't, I guess not, uh, aren't the, the right fit for you, um, right. you know, so, yeah. Well, it's definitely some good people have helped you along and to get that recognition in the IRB World Sevens, that must have been a huge, huge motivation for you to keep going because I'm sure you will have looked over your shoulder to those people that have supported you back then and to reach the heights of World Sevens in rugby. Man, what was that like for you to be recognized? I was actually quite surprised because little did I know right throughout that year, 2005, 2004, 2005, like at every tournament, every time I did an interview or, you know, would speak to somebody, they'll always ask, oh, who's your, you know, who do you think is, is, is your, like, the best player so far? Like, and I always said, my my teammate Amasia Roma Valence, yes. who's who's a you know very very good player. Um, you know, so I always said, oh, you know, this guy, you know, I I, I admire him. I, I love the way he plays, and I always pushed his name. And then you know, it wasn't until after the the Rugby World Cup in in, in Hong Kong, the Sevens World Cup, um, I actually decided to finish from. Uh, um, playing for New Zealand. I, I took a contract in Japan. So, and they didn't tell us that we were going to the awards until later on in the year. So I was in Japan and I get this letter. Are oh, you been invited to the IRB Sports Awards or Rugby Awards? <laughs> oh, wow, cool. You know, for me, I just thought I was going to support, you know, my, my teammate. Um, and and it was a free trip to Paris. <laughs> so... The best. Uh, um you know so i didn't know i had no idea um but to answer your question um to, to actually be awarded that amongst so many other great nominees and great players from that from those those years you know it was it was, it was humbling it was um like i said it was unexpected but um i can't you know it was unexpected, it was humbling, but I knew that I had done the work to put my, well, I didn't even know there was an award for that, mm. to be honest. I didn't even know they gave away those awards. Um, but um, I know that, I knew that to, to justify my my naming, my me being named as, as the IRB Player of the Year in 2005, I knew that the work that I had done to get to that point for me to deserve that award, to get picked over these other guys, I knew that I had done the work, I did the training, I, I you know, I committed myself to, to being the best player for, for for my country at that time, you know, and fortunately for me, I was I was selected to be the world player of the year um, that year. So it was very humbling, um, you know, to be honest. That's fantastic, man. Good story that. Yeah. Do you, um, do, uh, as um, as parents now, but also as um, you, know, you, you can, like, I know you guys go out there and coach as well. What advice would you give not only to your kids but also to the rugby players? What advice would you guys give to them as a parent and as a coach to? help them to inspire them to keep going for me it's always like just work hard you know just work hard like the harder you work you're going to see the good results mm -hmm. and also sometimes your best is not always the best you know sometimes you work so hard but at the end of the day the other team will uh, will win and that shows that like that that person was probably putting more than what you put in so just work hard and, and always stay humble you know like i'm sure like a lot of growing up it's always you always uh taught to be humble you know mm -hmm. you don't talk about yourself but like let your actions do the talking <clears throat> and it's always better for uh people to talk about you and not you talk about yourself 
you know? So, and just be a good listener. You know what I mean? Because sometimes like when you have that, have an open mind, go in, practice or a game, just that not only you're playing hard, but at the same time, you're going to learn something new on every time you go and practice. Because the minute you think that you know everything, then you go to a practice and the coach is trying to teach you something, you're definitely not going to listen. And then, you know, and that's, that is definitely not a good um, um, thing to have. So just, you know, just one of those things like work hard, play hard. And remember when you, uh, after the game, that's it. What happens on the field stays on the field. Like I know our next experience, you know, we get <clears throat> angry on the field, get so mad. We're all done our, you know, fair share of all those, but it's just the sportsmanship too. Cause you, like you said, like it's one of the, for me, it's one of the best sport. You can make so many friends mm -hmm. and those are like some of the best friends you're going to have, you know, they're always going to help you out no matter what, you know what I mean? So. Yes. Like, like Jack, I was saying, you know, it's always important that you get your players to, to understand that, Nothing comes easy. You know, you're always going to have to work hard and you know, outwork whoever you're trying to compete against. Um, and most times it's yourself, you know, sure. um, <laughs> trying to get yourself out of bed you know, to, 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 to go to training and, and do the extra work. Um, that's that's probably the most important thing is work hard and you know, stay grounded. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I always tell my kids, you know, the kids that I coach is, you know, have fun working hard, you know. If you, if you work hard and you're, having, and you're enjoying yourself, you know, it, it doesn't feel like a, a chore, you know. It's, a, it's always going to be fun. You're gonna, always going to be enjoying it. Um, the day that it doesn't, you know, become fun, mm -hmm. then you'll know that, you know, your time is up and you start playing golf. Stop playing pink golf. <laughs> and yeah. golf is a great game hey speaking of golf i know some buddies back home they um that's their game now no more no more rakapi they <laughs> swing the ball now <laughs> yeah hey, I, love, I love golf so do you go play golf in dubai with apollo <laughs> Yeah, we used to do the, you know, they always have a, have a tournament for our team and get the sponsors to come along and we raise money for, for the charity that we play for. Um, you know, it's a, it's a bit of fun, but, you know, golf is, you know, that's probably what's keeping us busy here, keeping us active in, in California right now. Um, cousin of mine who Jacko knows very well, uh, Rodney, Tusabalala. you know, he's the biggest burglar ever. <laughs> Uh, he's probably the only Samoan guy that goes and says he's got a 24 handicap and he shoots uh, five under. <laughs> <laughs> no, speaking of golf, man, it's, it's a fun sport, but like, yeah, I go play. I make sure I, if I'm playing the 18 hole, I make sure I have like 19 ball or 20 balls, you know, because oh, it's very cool. <laughs> So I'm sure when you come uh, to live, we're definitely going to go play some golf. Right? Oh, yeah. You're definitely uh, going to have to teach me some of the tricks, you know. Some of the good and bad tricks to, uh, to play golf. <laughs> I, I, only, I only hit bogeys, man. <laughs> oh, awesome. Hey, I just want to go back to a couple of points that came out of this. Is um, It comes, comes back to people. Um, oh, man. Sorry, I'm going to come back to golf <laughs> before I go back. Okay, lads. Who in your circle is the big... Biggest, 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 biggest uh, crybaby when they can't just get that ball into their hole. <laughs> He's making a hole. <laughs> uh, I'd have to say Nisi Malifa. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my pick. Probably Nisi Malifa. Wow. We'll have to look out for their, for their game next time then. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to go back to what I was going to ask you guys about. Um, 
you both both touched on that and, and it's people and it's so so important to be able to relate well and Deco, when you're talking about being humble and that i was actually thinking about what um Olene was going through he wasn't talking about who was the best so he wasn't talking about himself being the best player he was actually elevating his teammates and other people and to me you know that's just so much the way of of how we were brought up is when you uplift other people and being humble at it because um, we surely need that uh, today what what has rugby uh, taught you guys you know how it is when they say uh, we go onto the field and we smash each other and then off the field we're all buddies um, but how much have you guys taken from that game in terms of being humble and, and not being selfish like you know, like I said, like growing up in the island, it's always it was it was it was a hard life, you know. Like, um, but that was one of the things that my mom always said, and even the older uncles and cousins. Like, as soon as they see you starting to be a show off, they're gonna tap on your shoulders. Like, they don't do that. If you do it again, you're gonna get this. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, coming in the states and play rugby in the states, you know, you always try to like uh, do the best you can. And then like when you do something good and people are like bracing you, we're always like downplaying yourself. Like, cause we're, we're very humble people, but, and also like uh, playing here, it's like, especially that, uh, like the aftermatch over here in the States is awesome. Like <laughs> get to know, like I've met a lot of friends here in the States, you know, just by playing rugby different ethnics you know different culture it, it, it's it is the best the best feeling you get when you get appreciated by people and you get to uh people notice what you do on the field and off the field because that's that's important too like you can you can be the best player you know on the field but if you're you know cause trouble outside you know off the field and people people are gonna notice that and then and then that will, ch- it definitely changed the perspective of yourself too. But being humble is always a big thing growing up, you know, and, and it's, and I'm teaching it to my kids and even I'm doing some coaching now, like with a young, young group that my son's playing, uh, doing uh, the C, uh, CJRA, Charlotte Junior Rugby Association. And it's, it's, it's a great um, program and there's a lot of kids and I'm very proud to be part of it. And just seeing all the kids playing rugby in the States now, it's it's awesome, you know. But that's one of the things I always remind them. Stay grounded, like Rand said, and be humble. You know, and just and enjoy the game. Yeah, yeah just just like I mean Jacko uh, touched on it before, you know, what happens on the field, you leave it on the field. Um, and you know, you come off and I guess you know, rugby is the only sport that you smash each other for 80 minutes and then you come out and, and, and you have a, a beer with a, you know, with a guy that you just try to take his head off. Um, and, 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 and that's, you know, that's the beauty about it. It's like, you know, what's, what's done is done, you know, in, in most cases. Um, and I guess being here, playing in Japan, playing in France, playing, you know, and obviously playing the game in, in America, People do things differently, you know. They're, they're, the way they react and, and the way they um, interact is different to how we do it in New Zealand or how we do it in Samoa. So, you know, when I first came here, because football is most of these kids grow up, they they play football, mm. and uh, you know the the chest banging and the the you know the the, the hoorah that they, they go on yeah. when they make a big tackle. You know, we don't do that in in, in New Zealand. But I've come to understand that it's the territory and, 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 and the, the place that we're, that we're coaching in. It's, it's very hard to, to kind of change the, the mindsets, especially with rugby being so still, you know, being, it's been around for a long time, but it's still such a new sport to, 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 to Americans that, you know, these kids don't really understand that the psyche of, you know, being grounded, being humble, you know, yes. um, and not, you know, 
yelling at the top of their lungs when they they put a hat on um yeah. you know so it's 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 interesting you know but i've, I've kind of come to learn that um i guess from my experiences being in japan like in japan you know somebody hits you really hard they they, they stand up and they say they apologize because they tackled you so hard you know, <laughs> you know? so it's, 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 it's a little different you know and, and i guess being a coach now you've just got to adapt with with what you have uh, obviously you're still trying to instill the values and and and, and principles of, of of our game to, to the kids so that, that they understand but you know it's, it's really important you know just just be humble and be you know and i mean you know smashing somebody and you know don't have to be humble about that you know you're there to, to win the game but yeah. you know you do it in a way that is within the rules of the game and 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 then the spirit of the game is i guess what i'm trying to say yeah awesome awesome thank you so much for that yes humility goes a long way um hey look we just gone over the hour um i just have another thing or two to uh share with you guys or to talk more about but i want to just quickly touch on if you could share your thoughts on the moana pacifica team that has they just recently played a game a few um was a few weeks ago now um but also you may remember they had a pacifica team back in the days right um i forget what year barbarians. Remember. the barbarians specific barbarians <laughs> yes um in your humble most humble opinion where do you think pacific island rugby is at right now and in terms of development what needs to be done let's go with the the the, the good looks go first <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to get on my thoughts because i like i saw that i saw the game so last week and uh i mean it's it's a great like i mean i love the fact that they're putting pacific island players again and it's good to see a lot of uh, players that are, you know, getting selected. And I just, I just wish this is just me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wish that uh, they change the IRP would change a little bit of the rules, yeah. because there's a couple of players, and, and I understand that the, that the money. I mean, growing up in the Pacific, especially if you're a Pacific Island, like, you know, once you represent your country, you know. I mean, same time representing your family, but there comes a time now, especially nowadays, a lot of things are expensive and, you know, and and we have to support our family. At the end of the day, family is very important to uh, to the Pacific and just everybody in general. So, and uh, I always get that, uh, I mean, I wish that they are, you know, twist the, the uh, therapy rule a little bit because there are a couple great player like really good players that they uh and i know a lot of the the Samoan born kids in new zealand like they they're always dream to play for the all blacks and that's totally fine you know but i just wish that because some of them will like play one test or like 10 minutes mm -hmm. and i'm sure like the pacific island even some of the tongans some fijians you know and i'm sure you know they can and uh, they can definitely go out, like go to the Pacific Islands and help out. You know what I mean? Just because you play for 10 minutes, then that ruin your, like, you know, your chance of playing for Samoa, Fiji or Tonga. I just wish that they would just do something about that rule because there's some, like players like uh, Steve Lotua, mm -hmm. you know, he went to Europe. Uh, Charlie Pitawa, the Tonga, you know, yeah. there's a lot of, I mean, a couple of Fijians, really good players. so. And I'm sure the Pacific Island would definitely, <laughs> it will help them out. You know what I mean? Like the Pacific Island would, any of those players will go play for the Pacific Islands. I'm sure like the, you know, the players around will rally around them and, you know, it boosts the confidence and then the, you know, and they'll be able to play against the big teams. You know what I mean? Like, and then that will help some sponsors putting in some money for the Pacific Islands. So, just you know, just watching the game last week and having Tana and a couple, you know, legend, legendary players uh, coaching now, that that's that's a good start again. So, 
hopefully you continue to climb up and not just stop there and then go back down. You know what I mean? That's great. Um, my thoughts on that, um, you know, they, they mentioned something, of, you know, in that one of the speaker game about making history about, with that team. You know, where the, the the Pacific Island team that played back in the day, who played against the All Blacks, I thought that was history. That was a team that was, in my in in, in my opinion, you know, it, these were, people were saying, oh, you know, it's great that you know we've made history with this team. But when you look at the two teams, you know, I'm I'm all for Pacific Island rugby, you know whatever is happening. But when you look at that Pacific Island Barbarians team that back in 2004, I think in 2005, yeah. mm-hmm. um, that was a true squad from players that actually represented Tonga, Fiji and Samoa. Yeah, true. You know, but to me, that was the true essence of Pacific rugby. You know, the Moana Pacifica, they've got all those players all play super rugby for teams already in New Zealand you know, with Pacific Island heritage. Mm-hmm. So to me, I, I, that's, that, that was, you know, watching it, it was good to see the game. But in my, you know, in, in my heart, I was like, well, you know, I, I don't really know where it's going. Like, are they trying to develop these Pacific Island players for the New Zealand Super Rugby teams? Or are they trying to develop these Pacific Island players to go back and play for some more Tonga and Fiji? That's where, you know, I, I, I just couldn't quite understand or get my head around the concept of this whole thing. And um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks that. Um, but and in, in, in going back to, to, to where, you know, our Pacific Island rugby team should be, you know, personally, I think if we can look after and, and, and sort out our governance in terms of administration, in, in the three in the in the three uh, unions, then world rugby wouldn't have a problem, you yeah. know, spending that money and giving that money, because every year, obviously, every year world rugby gives that money, and you know it, it, it gets mishandled. So, you know, why should an organisation invest so much in countries that are not even trying to invest in, in their own, you know, and it help that. So, um, and supporting Jacko's um, comment about, mm. the, you know, the war rugby ruling about letting these Pacific, you know, Tongan, Fijian, Samoan players who can still offer something to the game and to international rugby go back. You know, I totally agree. Um, you know, I watched the Oceans Apart. I don't know if you guys watched that, okay. uh, the documentary with Dan Leo. You know, it was, it was quite disturbing seeing the CEO of World Rugby laugh when asked if we were going to get more seats on the on the, on the board, you know. He was like, oh, you know, not not in my lifetime. And he didn't even know what a tier two team was, you know, apart from, you know, so it was quite it was quite disturbing to, to know that these guys that hold the power and 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 hold the power to change these rules. Um, you know, turn a blind eye to it, you know, which is which is very disappointing because I feel like if a lot of these players can go back and contribute back to Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, um, even the lower teams, you know, Cook Islands, whatever, you know, it's just going to make the rugby a lot a, a lot more competitive. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, again, it, it just comes back down to governance and, and we can't ask for help from the outside when we're not even looking after our own backyard, you know, and, and making sure that that's taken care of. So um, until we do that, then I, I, I see that, you know, I guess uh, I'm speaking from a Samoan um, rugby players um, perspective, then we will see Mano Samoa back to where they used to be. Um, 1991, um, yep. Yeah, you know, so, um, and you've seen it, like, you know, no matter how many coaches have come through, you know, the, the, the system, they can only do so much because, you know, their hands are tied and, and, and all of that, you know. So I hope that this new management team for Manu Samoa get the support, all the support they need 
True. But to, to, to make sure that things run accordingly, you know, even with the sevens. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's sad to see, but, you know, I'd like to see, I'm interested to see where this Moana Pacifica thing actually goes, you know, because if you're talking about true Pacific Island rugby and investing in true Pacific Island players, then we got to go back and remake that 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 model that we had back in 2004, 2005, where they played the All Blacks, and have you know the guys that are representing those three uh, three nations make up that team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was a really good team. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah I yeah. agree with you. Yeah, it was Lawaki, a... Lawaki, 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 Titi, Titi yeah. yeah, that was that was it was fun to watch. So I definitely agree with uh, Randy on that one. Mm. Definitely, definitely, and I since and I agree with both of you there, and I sincerely hope that it does elevate uh, all those nations in the Pacific, because um, uh, we, we we can't keep going down, right? That's just not improving uh, the game at all, um, guys. I think that this is uh, another topic that we could probably chit chat on mm-hmm. about, um, have another Dalano session on it. And, um, but I sincerely hope that it does continue to rise because um, when you're watching Pacific Islanders play the game, they go like this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's no slowing down. Well, maybe they slow down to sidestep, <laughs> but, or they just sidestep on the go. Uh, so I since yeah, I think there's another session for us to uh, get together and talk yeah, about that. Sure. Um, I, but also, I mean, already, I mean, wouldn't you love as a coach to have those players at that caliber to to represent their heritage or, or I mean the, the country where they're from? I know a lot grew up in NZ and elsewhere, but man, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to have such players like that in your team and as a coach, right? Yeah, and, and if you talk to guys like Stephen Lautour and you know Charles Peter, they all want to go back and contribute back to the you know to Samoa, Tonga, and, and and Fiji. You know, so there's no shortage of of want and desire for those players. It just comes down to world rugby, you know, and sure. you know it, it, it's sad because rankings mean power and money. Yeah. So, and and, and when you look at it. Tonga, Fiji, Samoa, we've all beaten those top eight countries in the world, you know, tier one country, you know. So if that continues, their rankings go down, their, you know, cash flow supply goes down as well, you know. So it's a a touchy subject. All about the money nowadays. Yeah, man. (laughs) Very much, very much. And I do hope that everybody gets to the even you know the even playing field because again you know i'm always thinking about the humility and being humble with us in the pacific um talking about it will also help and thank you guys so much for being here and talking and sharing your thoughts about motivation um so with that i would like to close this off and Say thank you to my co-host, Jacko Ahoy, who's a lefty, high jumper, <laughs> um, side stepper, and to Oreni. Yes, brother. I mean, if my brother hadn't talked highly about you, I probably wouldn't have, because uh, I actually slowed down playing rugby and I done other stuff. But it was great to see your story and see the successes that you have and that you've remained uh, a humble person as you, as you are. So, Jacko. For thy love for your time and to um Oreani Ai. Thank you, thank you so much for Thai Tele Lava to you as well. I thank appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Man. You're welcome. Thank I you. appreciate thank your you very time. much, Uzo. All right, man. Next time. See we'll you another chat. See you, Rene. Yes. Thank you. Next time. Yes. So everybody <laughs> out there, I hope that the stories that were shared today, I hope that it will inspire you to go for it <laughs> and reach your goal. Thank you so much. Aloha. Peace. See you guys. See you guys. Ciao.